I came from New York City to live the main life. I was hired to design outdoor footwear. I live the main life. We're looking for college grads, so come get your check. I came from Venezuela to leave the main life. I opened my own restaurant. Learn more about hundreds of Maine jobs and our tax program for college grads at liveandworkinmaine.com. Coming up on this week's episode. We're the microbrew of composting. We love it here. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. And this week at Myro Studios, we're hearing the music of Joel Thetford. Hi everyone, I'm Erin O'Valley, and this is Kevin Oates. You're watching Main Life. An echo of an echo is the semblance of a sound. And I've pressed and I've waited with my ear upon the ground. I'll see you there Waiting in the willows with your autumn hair Oh, lover, I'll see you there After many miles Hi everyone, welcome to our home at Myro Studios in downtown Portland. Kevin, how's it going? Uh, things are awesome. Uh, we have an upcoming concert on June 30th uh, with the Rustic Overtones um, at Vinegar Hill Music Theater in Arundel. So that'll be the full band uh, backed up by eight of our students oh, from wow. Maine Youth Rock Orchestra. So have that'll you be, been to Vinegar Hill yet? I played Hill there yet? last year. Um, Isn't it and beautiful? It's beautiful. It's absolutely incredible space in Arundel. June 30th? June 30th. Put it on your calendar. All ages, it'll be great. So we had a really cool week. We traveled nine hours both ways no way. to, <laughs> yes, but it was well worth it. Lubeck, Maine, East Machias, yes. Machias, and we are gonna tell you a little bit about our business that we featured, Coast of Maine, and we went on an adventure with the Ladies Adventure Club. Oh, awesome. Ladies only, sorry. sorry We're gonna hear more from okay. the founder, Jillian Cher. They are all over the state doing some really cool things. Awesome, and this week in music, uh, we are hearing Joel Thetford, who just released his newest album, Outer Banks. Take a listen. Another Sunday night Holding on to what is right Wearing my shirt from yesterday Bathroom sink full of what happened the other night We are proud to support Maine businesses. Not only are they our customers, they are the lifeblood of our state. Whether they're entrepreneurs who have come here to try to grow a business and make a life, or whether they've been in a sixth generation business in Maine, we're proud of them all. Hey everyone, today our travels bring us to Lubeck, Maine, the easternmost town in the United States and home of the iconic West Quaddy Lighthouse. While you take in the magnificent views behind me, we're gonna head a few towns over to East Machias, where we will tour coast of Maine. There they take locally sourced residuals like lobster and blueberries to make the richest fertilizer in organic soil for people all over the country to enjoy. essentially Coast of Maine organic products. We manufacture compost, in particular lobster compost. When you go and eat a lobster, like you have a lobster dinner, all that stuff that's left on the plate when you're done, that's the kind of stuff that we actually compost here. We bring in an amazing <laughs> amount of lobster shells. Wow, I gotta get closer. Yeah. Smells like the ocean meets 
the farm. <laughs> that, that, exactly. That's what it is. The ocean meets the farm. We're taking bucketfuls of lobster shells based on a specific recipe. Over the top there, you can see the top of the uh, uh, sawdust that we use. Mm -hmm. And then the, the backhoe will come in, and he will blend those and lay out these windrows. And, and as those heat up, they'll turn them. All that biology that's happening in there, everything's breaking down, so it eventually comes out as plant-ready food. Um, that's what we do better than anybody else. And right now, when you look around, it doesn't look, doesn't look very good, but what's in there really makes your plants grow. We're like a craft brewer, so we have our own recipes. We're using inputs that are indigenous to the area that we're in, and we happen to be world-class composters. We're the microbrew of composting. Who doesn't want to eat Maine lobster or farm with Maine lobster? Exactly. <laughs> That's so cool. So it's pretty nice to have all of these raw materials right local. I mean, that's why, we, although we're located way out in the middle of nowhere in down east Maine, that's where these materials are. So the lobster, the blueberry waste, and the carbon sources. For us, it's pretty much heaven on earth because we love it here. You have iconic Maine beauty, like bold coasts, rocky shoreline, and very, very few people. So we get, uh, we get the luxury of affording that all to ourselves. <laughs> I love living in Maine. I came here 17 years ago. I rolled into Washington County. I knew I'd never leave. I now live in Lubeck, of course work here, and spend almost four years now. I had already on the side was an organic gardener. Uh, I grew all my own food. I helped start the Lubeck Farmer's Market. So when this job popped open and it w required a technical background, it was kind of an easy fit for me because this was already my lifestyle. And now I get to work my lifestyle. I love what we do. We're taking a marine residual that might otherwise be thrown in the woods and then we're able to bring it back and bring joy to somebody's life. I love the fact that we've got a beautiful image of the coast of Maine on the front of our bags and I think that that impacts people when they see our products across the country and I'm hoping that they have that same response that, that Maine is a beautiful environmentally friendly place not only a, a wonderful place to come to visit, but a wonderful place to come and live. They say if you love what you do, you never really work a day in your life, and that's kind of how I feel working here. Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm looking for the perfect match. I need someone who's good with kids. I could definitely use a helping hand. I want someone I can really talk to. Please say a command. Someone who always has my back. I just want someone who really gets me. Hi, I'm Sharon. Nice to meet you. It's your car. Find it at Quirk. In this week's Places and Spaces, we are touring the Press Hotel, former home of the Portland Press Herald. They are a member of the Autograph Collection, curating one-of-a-kind travel experiences. We're going to head inside to meet the developer, Jim Brady, and take a look. A lot of people know that I am in the business of telling stories. It's good to be back here at the Press Hotel, which in your vision, this development also is a story. Yes, yeah, so I was able to take this old Portland Press Herald building that's been around since 1923 and created stories for the newspaper and also for a radio channel that they had as well and really transform this building to create an experiential hotel that allows people to come and get the authenticity of what Portland really is. It's really not just to stay overnight, but it's a gathering for the community. That's very much what I wanted to achieve, so I'm, well, I'm glad job. to hear you say that it has done that, because we very much want to be a center for the community to come to. We've got, as you said, a world-class restaurant, a uh, wonderful chef. Inkwell, our bar, uh, right here just off of the lobby, offers an opportunity to stop in, meet people for a cappuccino in the morning or croissant, and have a beer or cocktail uh, later in the afternoon. And we really wanted to create this as a gathering place for the community. 
And you mentioned art galleries in the old port, but you pride yourself in the art gallery downstairs and you feature local artists, which is unique and special. Yes, we very much wanted to be connected to the main art scene. And so one of my prerequisites was that every piece of art that went into the hotel had to be from a main based artist. We have some who only some are here, but nonetheless they had a connection to the state of Maine. Everything from sculptures to paintings to photography really dispersed across the hotel from guest rooms to the public areas. And as you mentioned, on our lower level, we have an area that's really a gallery and we're currently rotating exhibits through that gallery. This piece of art is actually called The Swarm, and you'll recognize it looks a, bit, a little bit like a tornado, if you will, that really is meant to represent the chaos that goes on in a newsroom when news stories are being created. And, and so we were able to collect these vintage antique typewriters and, and really create this amazing piece of art that is really quite special. So we're, we're proud to host that as well as a number of other uh, Maine-based artists. In the wallpaper, you actually took stories from the Portland Press-Herald and created a very authentic, one-of-a-kind hallway. C customized a corridor wall covering. We, that was something that came across from the interior design firm that I thought was a really uh, great idea to really help pull the brand through and really make it read. So we worked together with the Portland Press-Herald to be able to pull headlines from their newsprint uh, over the years and picked out some headlines that we thought were really relevant to Portland and really ground people here in the local community. And so we did this custom wall covering that a lot of people comment. Uh, there's, there's some pretty funny headlines in there, so. Years ago, listening to you speak about the vision and idea you had for the Press Hotel um, at a speaking engagement at the Chamber of Commerce. So to sit here two years later, um, it's, it's been great. Well, it's a good we're journey. very, very pleased with it. Most people called me crazy back then, but now they're very excited about what we we're able to create here. Yeah, see for yourself. <laughs> well, congratulations and stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be back to introduce you to executive chef Josh Berry. You're in for a treat. Congratulations. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Charlotte. Bar class, yoga, snowshoeing, or kayaking, there are a variety of adventures that you can find at the Ladies Adventure Club. We're here today at Ovens Mouth Preserve in Booth Bay, taking a hike with some of the members and meeting the lead adventurer herself, founder Jillian Scher. The Ladies Adventure Club is a membership organization. It is a club just for women who want to get out and adventure. It's grown to over 125 members. It feels like it's a very safe space to explore and to be together. So I can't imagine that it wouldn't grow bigger. I think I thought of it as a way to meet some like-minded women, women who like to try new things and get outside and do things. I liked this concept and the idea, and it seemed like something that would be a fun way to experience new places. Always interesting to meet new people, which is, I think, been the most fun of all. Adventure means to me being a little scared, being a little frightened, rising above that fear and having a real feeling of accomplishment after finishing that adventure. I grew up here. I left for a little while. I wanted my kids to be raised in the same sort of kind, loving community where access to the outdoors, such as skiing, biking, hiking, is easy. I'm newer to Maine. I, I grew up going to camp in Maine, and I really loved it up here, but I was living in the Boston area. Really had been thinking about moving someplace where there was a smaller community and more access to the outdoors. So moved up here with my family um, just over three years ago and we've been really happy to do it. Um, loved it so far and our only regret is that we didn't do it sooner. I love seeing women getting outside and hopefully there's like this trickle down effect with their families and getting their kids outside and being willing to take more risks. It's really exciting and it pushes me to get outside and see new parts of Maine. I've never been on this walk before so this is, um, it's exciting.
Jillian Cher, founder of Ladies Adventure Club, who you just heard from, not only brought her doggies on the hike in Booth Bay, but she also submitted more photos of brother and sister, Fanny and Milton, for this week's Main Tales. As you just saw, Fanny and Milton are not only very energetic, but they are very photogenic as well. Thank you, Mom Jillian, for sending those in. And Fanny and Milton would also like to thank their veterinarians over at South Portland Veterinary Hospital for taking very good care of them. If you'd like your furry friend to be featured on Main Life, you can email a video or photos at info at And we're gonna hear another song from Joel Thetford. This one's called Another Fall, off his new album, Outer Banks. At Town & Country, we continue to grow a collaborative and innovative environment for our employees. And as such, we value supporting others, such as the game changers, who pursue their passions to make Maine a better place to live and work. Time now to introduce you to our main innovator and creator. Meet this week's Game Changer. Welcome back to Game Changers. I'm Jess Knox. I'm here today with Amanda O'Brien of Social Media Breakfast. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your work with Social Media Breakfast? I started a monthly event series called Social Media Breakfast Maine like eight years ago, like before social media was a, a thing. thing. That's right. You know, it was, it was just at the time it was about 22 nerds in a conference room. Um, and we were just trying to figure this out. There felt like there was power there, but how did you use it and how could we use it to grow businesses? So um, those 22 nerds kept multiplying um, and yeah every month now we have between 100 to 140 people monthly and we tackle kind of everything in and around that space so social media content marketing digital marketing design and a lot about storytelling and just mm -hmm. making sure you're getting in front of the right people at the right time the topic of social media and the medium mediums uh, that are encompassed within that definition are continually changing and and so do you have a lot of people coming in and out of the uh, of your breakfast or sort of uh, as attendees that are doing new things and using uh, some of the new platforms that are coming out every day? Yeah, so every month I ask the attendees what topics they want to see. We have like a raffle, so they put on the back of their business card the topic they want to see. So I have a, a constant kind of group of things that I can uh, pull from. I'm, I'm fortunate to do this for work professionally too, so I get to speak and travel, so I meet people along the way. And you'd be surprised how many people from away want to come to Maine to speak about marketing. So I've had some national speakers come um, just because they, they want to be here. So yeah, we cover the new stuff, but then you can always talk about Facebook a little bit more. Hmm. So we cover that a lot too. How do you think the breakfast themselves build that community and that connection between folks? Sure, I mean, starting with those 20 nerds in a, in a conference room, the event was never about me or, or where I worked. It was about the room and connecting those people with other people that maybe thought like them or were stuck on the same problem. And it's constantly been that. It's been about what the room needs and what that community needs. And, you know, there's no 
Twitter account for the Social Media Breakfast Maine, but there is a, a hashtag. So if anyone has a question about social media throughout the month when they're not sitting in the room, they'll use that and they know that pool of people will, will pick up and hear it and, and respond. So it's always been about what the room, the market, the businesses in Maine need to, to know about. And, and I've seen people get jobs in that room. I've seen people decide to start their startup finally in that room. I've seen people grow their businesses and get leads in that room. Uh, it's, it's been great. It's, it's just been a really great community. So if people want to find out more information about the Social Media Breakfast, where do they go? SocialMediaBreakfastMaine.com. All right. And you have a Facebook page? I do. Excellent. And that's it. I think, right? Yeah, and I mean, so that if anyone's using Instagram or Twitter, the hashtag is SMBME. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for me. Our special guest today is food writer and chef Christine Rodelevich out with her first cookbook. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks We're for excited. being here and thanks for getting me in the kitchen, which doesn't often happen. <laughs> so Green Plate Special, uh, the title of your book, is also the title of a column in the sore section of the Portland Press Herald mm -hmm. every week. Um, so tell folks a little bit about the book and your weekly column. The point of the column is to, t to get sustainable eating out of the homestead and sort of into the average eater's kitchen. So educate us on why that is important to you and why it's a passion. I really feel that if sustainable eating and sourcing and not wasting food is going to make a big impact on the environment as a whole, everybody's got to be doing it. But everybody doesn't have to be doing it to the full extent that they're going off the grid. They can do it within their, their time constraints, their money constraints, their inclination um, constraints, and their cooking abilities. And as a cooking teacher myself, I think anybody can expand that. Great. <laughs> well, teach me. Okay. This recipe is collard green wraps with chicken and uh, local vegetables. These are all the, the uh, root vegetables that I was able to find at the farmer's market in Brunswick this morning. So these are green uh, daikon radishes. Um, you want to try one? Yeah. I Those are a little sweet. And then these are rose turnips. Those are a little spicy. And these are purple carrots. And these are orange carrots. And I'd be curious to see if you could taste the difference between the two. I like that. I can't. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. I would not put all <laughs> this together. This is well, great. This is replacing my taco night. Oh, yes, this exactly. is great. And what you're going to do is you're going to work with the back side of the leaf. What I like to do is take both ends mm -hmm. and fold it over the middle kind of tightly. So bad at wrapping present. Yeah. This is like restaurant style. Yes, it's, people get very impressed with this. And you know, once you make 10, you're an expert. So the, here's the difference between <laughs> the expert <laughs> and the newbie. But yes. you know what? I would call oh, this an ug like, ugly fruit. I'd call yes. it an ugly wrap. Yes. And yes. it's still going to taste good, right? Yes. Thank you so much All for right. sharing with us. And don't forget, yes, Green Plate Special in Source. Yes. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Mmm. Healthy. <laughs> and good. Thanks again to Christine for coming in and teaching us how to make those healthy green wraps. We have a little healthy competition going on right now for, with healthy eating. Yes. How's it going? Uh, it's so much better. Um, it's part of my routine now. I have so much more energy. I'm sleeping better. So good. it's incredible what a good balanced diet and a good healthy diet can do for you. And some of the tips that Christine talks about in her book is taking ingredients you might already have in your fridge and creating a healthy meal. So check it out. And uh, we have one last song from Joel Thetford today off his new album, Outer Bank. Thanks so much for watching Main Life. We'll see you next week. In these smoke filled bar rooms, wondering what I should do. Think I'll drift away.
girl, she's got me. She's got me still.